One of the first things that every young budding race car driver does to hot up their car is to put in a race dashboard. And in automation, you can put in race dashboards. And wouldn't it be great when you go to export it to BeamNG if it just worked? Well, funny you should say that. Because I've come up with a way to actually get one implemented super duper easily into BeamNG. And if you're thinking, hmm, that looks somewhat familiar. Well, funny you should say that. Deja vu. It's actually the one from the new Scintilla, though an awful vehicle actually has some really cool stuff in it. But for me to show you a tutorial, I should probably start by making the car. Don't worry if you want to skip right to the tutorial, there's time codes. You could just go look at that and skip up all this sort of stuff if you don't like me enough. But if you do like me and like the fact that I'm doing all of this stuff for the automation and BeamNG community, please go ahead, like it and subscribe all that kind of jazz. Now I'm not gonna do some sort of like small MX-5 sort of thing which you'd see a lot of race dashboards put in or remake my Formula V which I've already done. I on the other hand am going to make a normal car into a ballistic full CLK GTR type of thing. I'm thinking I kind of want to do a Lambo body, but I'm not really entirely sure. What I'd rather do is work with one of these beam die bodies. I want to go... What's the shortest one? Is it 2.5? Let's go 2.5. Go for a hard top. They're mid-engine only, so that's going to be a little bit tricky. Wait, what about this? Oh, this can have front engine. Yeah, let's go with that. That looks very peculiar. Is there a non-hard top version? Yeah, this is just a regular, not convertible top version. There we go. That's looking a little bit better, though it still looks a little bit weird and disproportionate. Hopefully, however, I can fix that myself. I'm going to go with a front longitudinal, some double wishbone because that's easy to make and I'm thinking that this probably would have come with a small little four cylinder and then we'll just make it into some sort of turbo type thing. So make it somewhere around a 1.6 liter which is very common for these sorts of things and then turbocharge the balls off of this thing. Let's hope that we're going to get somewhere at least 300 kilowatts. This is going to be loud. This is going to be very loud. It's got the race uh, intake already. These things are not very friendly to the ears. And then obviously no mufflers. We don't need any of that weak sauce. God, weak sauce. I've not heard anybody use weak sauce in a while. <laughs> I'm already cringing from saying it. But we have work to do. So let's just get to doing this. Up the springs, up the amount of boost that we got. And I suppose we can learn the new uh, how the engine deals with engine stress now because apparently in the new patch notes engine stress limits now export so I don't know if we got say like 10% stress does that mean that 10% of driving time middle that doesn't make sense because depending how long you drive how does 10% translate to... This is something I'm going to have to test, but we're going to give it a little bit of a try today, at the very least. By having 13%, I, I think that'll be a good test to start with. Because we also have about 300 kilowatts, like I said. I was very close on that. Oh, look, there we go. More power. But we don't have, want to have our power too peaky, but being over 6,000 is probably a good number. Now, what sort of morphing could we do? Can we move the cockpit back? We can. Why is there like a little bit of, if I'm, if I'm moving here, you can see that it highlights down the bottom there. What is that all about? That's weird. Then we've got something down here. Oh, look at that. Interesting. Then the sill at the bottom, we can raise or lower. Okay. And it looks like we could chop top it eh, slightly, but at least we can. Some wheel fender things. Now we're fine with that. What can we do in the front? We can bring that down and bring that forward. Yes, we can. Then we can make it into a weird broken bumper look. Yeah, nah, we, we don't like that. And then we can add front, uh... <laughs> we can do a lot of weird stuff to this car. They got some strange body morphs going on here. You know what? Since we're going to do the front ones, let's do the rear ones as well. All right. This <laughs> this is just weird. What about widening it? Now, widening look, looks weird. We'll do it with mostly without that. Rear wheel drive because most race series require you to be two wheel drive. Then we're going to go with the manual because I want to have clutch control. Go something like a six speed race gearbox. Open differential. Wait. 
Sorry, not open. Gear differential. That could have been a big yikes, I suppose. Some radial semi-slicks. And we're going to go with like 215s, I think, for now. We'll see how much power we're trying to put through here and how much is struggling with it. We're going to go with a full race diffuser because I would go just a normal sports diffuser for a car that doesn't want to be in the sort of race category that uh, would make you put on a race diffuser. But the race diffusers are so weak that I'm actually fine running that because unfortunately automation really, really severely underestimates how good race diffusers are or any sort of aero device. The only thing that they really overestimate, maybe, I don't, it's a bit hard to say, is front splitters. They're very good with front, front splitters. Everything else, way underpowered compared to their real life counterparts. Go with a little bit of brake cooling, not too much. Gonna keep it to one seat is gonna be basic because it's just gonna be carbon fiber with a just a smidgen bit of padding. Electronic power steering is the new norm. Go ABS because we don't need trash control. And then a very good race suspension setup. Apparently the car has severe issues with the spit, so yeah, maybe those bigger tires would have helped. And what does it look like? A slammed hmm a little bit too much into the wheel wall but i think we'll be fine with that for now what do we got for wheel spin 45 percent oh my goodness it wants to have a 345 kilometer an hour top speed i feel that they've uh d started underestimating aero drag now because this is oh, well over 200 miles per hour with only 300 kilowatts i feel that's not entirely accurate. In fact, I'm going to leave some feedback. I'm sorry. I know I'm dibber-dobbing, but this is too far. We are going to slow this down, though, with a little bit of downforce. And I'm thinking also maybe the gearbox should be a little bit shorter because we don't want to have, like, such a big gap in between gears. Then for our wheels to make up the rest of this, we can go up to 245s. That's not too bad, except we're kind of limited now by the width that the car allows. Now, I could go wider on the body, but I kind of want to do my own white bodying work. I think maybe some downforce would help with all of this. All right, let's, uh, let's just start working on this. First, we're going to give it a paint job that we like, thinking some sort of teal sort of color. Then we're going to start working on wide bodying. Now, this is why I didn't want to make the normal body wider, is because I don't want to get the body in the way of actually having my own own fender flares to make this thing look full race hardcore. That is a good starting place. In fact, actually, you know what? We might go a little bit more berserk and make this even more wide. Oh, no, chassis is actually coming through there. Let's bring that back just a smidge. There. Good. Hidden well and proper. Let's give us some race wheels. You know what? Look, I think we've got some turbo fan. Let's try turbo fan wheels this time. Yeah. All right, let's go with this. Can I give this like white weird bit its own color or do I not have a say in that? I don't think I have a say in what color that is. Damn it, that's disappointing. Is there better turbo fans maybe? Oh wait, we even got one with center locks, nice. What was the weird one that I chose before then? I'm so confused. Let's start adding some fender flares on. We've got lots of things to choose from. We're gonna start off with just some simple stuff. I think we'll also leave this open for like, uh, kind of the aero expulsion kind of thing. Now for the front area, we do have some front leading edge sort of stuff. I think this could work. They don't light up. Like this one's got a fat lip on it and this one has like no lip on it. What? Why? All right, so I'm gonna have to put something along the top to make this work. Yeah, okay, I don't, yeah, I think this can do what we want it to do. It looks weird, but <laughs> I suppose it works. Do we have, yeah, we got good. We have something like this we could stick on the side to kind of fill in some of the weird gaps we got. What do you think so far? Um, this is, I mean, it's, it's coming together at least a little bit. Now, this thing probably would have come with pop-ups, so we're gonna have to come with some, uh, up with some sort of way to get rid of pop-ups, because pop-ups are not good for race cars. I'm thinking maybe something like this, perhaps? Hmm, they look like hot garbage. But for now, it'll do. We'll just uh, ignore that. I just realized that this is actually looking a lot more like an MX-5 than what I was hoping. 
At first I was thinking that I'd use this bean body to do something like my little MGF, but yeah, nah, this is straight up an MX-5. I'm an idiot. Now, for the rear, we could do a normal sort of like an extra vent thing, but I'm thinking instead what I might do is get rid of the rear altogether. So where is, here we go, got some rear bumper stuff. We'll just bring that a little bit transparent. Oh, I think this is gonna work. Yeah, I think that works. It's a little bit like over dramatically big, but I think it'll do. Now, big F off wings. We could go with this and time attack isn't restricted by body bound. So we can also make this extra thick and long. What do we do for taillights? Since we are missing the normal placement sort of area, I'm thinking maybe we'll just stick in some temporary looking lights, maybe? Grab this? Oh, I kinda like that look. The other thing we could potentially do is 3D them and then put them on the edges of these, which, you know what? I actually think I like the look of that. You know what? It looks stupid and I think I am in love. I just make all of the terrible choices, honestly. Well, she may not be a looker, but she's the sort of car that I love. I really do like making these ballistic sort of vehicles like this, the uh, Marcos sort of rip-off thing that I made a while ago. Just, this is generally one of my more favorite things to do. And I really am appreciative of the automation devs of allowing us to do this really dramatic stuff with bodies. All of this extra work we can do is just, mwah, just great. It's great stuff. I just wish we could actually make proper race cars, which means go a little bit more ballistic with things like tires. I'd like to see full slicks, not just semi slicks. But I, I know that that's not really what this game is meant to be about. This is looking like a mix of really good and really bad. I don't know how to feel about most of this. I maybe put some like ventilation up around the top end of the wheel well, so it really looks like it should be on the extended fenders, not these fenders. It'll do, I suppose, because I can't really put cutouts into this, unfortunately. Now, let's tackle that interior where we're going to put our dash. We're going to use this because this is going to make for a good example to show how easy this can be or how complicated, if you wanted to be more complicated, it can be. Did I English that right? You know what I meant. Jesus. I, su I suck at the speaking sometimes. We do have the gauge clusters here, but we don't need that. I would love to go with one of these wheels, but also we don't have this uh, sort of setup yet. This is something I might do in the future though. So for now, we're just gonna go with a regular sort of steering wheel. We'll go with something with maybe some paddle shifters because, oh boy, do I love paddle shifters. I know Jeremy Clarkson doesn't like paddle shifters, but I'm not a 50 year old man yet. So I still, have the energy to be able to do things like move flappy paddle shifters, even if they are a little bit slow. I mean, I'd rather them not be though. We're gonna send this over as not a Mazda. And with this, everyone will be fooled. What does Test Track Reckon will do? Watch it be like really abysmally slow. A two minute, great. We should probably also place some invisible wings. Test track now says 158, not bad. For a car that looks, uh, interesting. <laughs> oh no. And we've got our car in and it sounds like farts. Let's give it a bit of a rev. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a fart cannon. And you can see that we have no dash or anything in there. Oh, gab cameras are way too fast. Yeah, you can see nothing in there. So what do we do? Luckily, we don't have to do a whole lot because the files are already in here under a common thing. So all you need is to start by unpacking your car right there. Open it in Explorer. Open up into the vehicles and into the file name and drag this supplied file called DigiDash into your car. Then find the main JBeam, which will be named after the car itself. You can open this in Microsoft Visual Studio like this, or you can open it up in a program called Notepad++. This one is probably a lot lighter and a lot more people like this one. Then you find the area called slots and just after this one here, you're gonna select there, you're gonna hit enter, and then you're gonna paste in this line that I've uh, supplied of code for you. We're gonna hit save on that, go back to our car and hit control R. Now all we have to do is find where it is. It's in here somewhere. Let's go control W. And if we mouse over, we can see it's right here 
Right, there it is. Okay. Now you're wondering, well, this doesn't do me a lot of good. This is the more tricky part. All we have to do now is close out of this, open up the DigiDash file itself, and then under flex bodies, you've got these two bits here. And these are the things that we've actually got in here. The rest of it, leave it as is. All you're going to be doing is playing with position and a little bit of rotation. And if you want to, you can play with scale if that so suits your fancy. The things to keep in mind is is the first number under X is how wide from the center of the vehicle it is. Y is how far forward, negative being more forwards and positive being more backwards. And then Z is the height. Now along these axes, this being the width of the car, so this direction coming through the car, that is the way in which it'll rotate on its X axis. So that is your X rotation. And then your Y rotation being from the top means that it'll rotate this way. And then same, wait, no, hold on. Y is from the rear, Z is your rotation from this angle. You, you'll get used to it, you'll have to fiddle with it, find out the right ones to do. But for now, we just want this to move back this way a little bit, which means making it more positive. I'm gonna make this 0 0.5, and this is in, I believe, meters. I'm gonna save that, come back to beam NG, hit control R, and just the housing moved, because I didn't move both of them together. And that moved this way, right? Have I done it wrong? I may have may have done it wrong. Sorry, that was width. Uh, sorry, yeah, width is that way. You know, that's actually almost lined up. We're going to change that to a minus first, and then we're going to go 0.4. Control S, come back, Control R, and that's almost lined up. Now we're going to move it further back, and we're going to just sort of switch this to zero and see where that sits us to start with. Okay, that's a little too far. So you're just going to be fiddling with this for a while. We're going to go 0.1 of a meter, which is 10 centimeters forwards. It's close enough for now. Then we're going to raise this up. 0.9 should do it. No, 1.3. That's almost half a meter. Yeah, that's gone too far. There's lots of little tweaking, but it is actually rather simple. And we're only doing one right now because we only need to do one. We're just going to skip to the end where I finished this. We're going to do all the rotations and everything. All right, now that we've got that ooh, well enough situated, we don't have to now redo all the calculations for this one. All we need to do is grab this information from your position and rotation, or just basically the numbers section, and paste that in there. Control S, come back here, Control R, and in it goes. Now. You could play around with this a little bit because you don't need the housing. Luckily, these are two different parts. So if you wanted, you could just go say like this and either delete it or put two slashes, which makes it not a valid bit of code. Control S on that, come back here, hit Control R. And now you've just got the shield. And you could try to fit that into any sort of dash thing. And if you're like, oh, but that's not the right size, that's fine. Remember, you've got these scales here. You can make this whatever you want this to be. We're just going to make that like too extra wide. Doesn't need to be any more scaled on the Y axis. And then we're going to make this about two on that axis. So control R. And you can see that that's getting in there. And you just tuck it in there if that's what you want to do. But I don't... Oh, you know what? Actually, maybe I do like that. All right, let's actually make that fit. You know what? Yes. That works quite well. Now it is out a little bit. You can make this fit however you want it to. Now all I have to do is give myself a racing position. So we're done with that file and I'm just gonna so quickly set up myself a camera and I'm also gonna change the wheel to be a rotating wheel. I do have a tutorial on how to do rotating wheels. You can go ahead and watch that video. And after a bunch of work, we have ourselves our steering wheel. And just remember that these tutorials are not just one-offs. I have made a bunch of tutorials. So if you want to look at more tutorials, go have a look at them and subscribe if this is the sort of stuff that you like. I mean, by this stuff that you like, I don't mean a lack of skill. I mean, uh, I mean, the game not being good enough for my uh, greatness. <laughs> There's a possibility that this vehicle is not amazing. <laughs> it seems to have massive kick in gear shifts and going around corners. And nah, I probably should have gone a better transmission to help uh, deal with this sort of stuff. But <laughs> I might drive this one from third person. I am much better with controller when going, yeah. I, also, there was the suspension damage, as you saw. That's why it was going all wayward. Not anything else. I am a perfect driver. And now, how fast is this thing? 
It's a little bit under zero at high speed, so... Oh dear, that sucks. I probably should have done all the driver testing before I went and did all of the work on the steering wheel and whatnot. That way I would know that this car was going to work uh, before now I have to like go re-export it if I want to do that. Which you should also pack your mods uh, when you're done as well. That's a thing to keep in mind. What I've done is I've, I've kind of coded myself into a corner now. I don't want to re-export the car because it'll overwrite everything. <laughs> uh, there are ways around it. But also I'm just noticing there's a little bit of a blue line down at the bottom there. That's not great. And brakes are possible. We are going quite fast. Damn it. Wait, what's this hole in the side of the vehicle? Come on, devs. You should be fixing this stuff by now. Oh. All right. Well, that's fine. I'll, I'll give them a pass on that one because there are many ways in which you can go around fixing these sorts of things. You just look online. Oh, God damn it. The kick on this thing when it changes gears is just brutal, man. My God, like... If we uh, see it again, you'll see that it's just around gear changes. So let's go around Adam's apex, which is usually a real pain in the butt sack of a corner. No, nope. okay, there we go. No, nope. you know what it was? I think it was actually not the gear shift, but instead a spike in power because the maybe I did make the power a little too peaky and this thing shifts outside of its power band. So when it comes onto its power band, it kicks you out chronically, and then it wants to change gears. And changing gears uh, does a thing called weight transitioning, which moves the weight from the rear wheels onto the front wheels because it slows down the vehicle. That wouldn't be such a big issue if it wasn't mid-corner. When it's mid-corner and it's doing that on its own decision-making uh, prowess, BMNG being not the greatest decision-maker when it comes to gear shifts, uh, it'll, uh, oh god damn it. We've gone around again. It'll cause the thing to have no traction on the rear, basically, which is what you want to do when you want to drift. But if you're unprepared for it in a peaky powered vehicle, and then suddenly you're outside of the power band and you have no real control of the clutch because you're just using a controller and you don't like to clutch and you don't have any feathering on a clutch anyway with a controller, it, yeah, it just, it'll, it'll just go. There is really next to no way to bring that back. God, this car is brutal. But here we go. We got the car. We've got all of the uh, stuff in the dashboard. Now, because this is the BeamNG's default thing, you do have a lot of things you can change. So you got the race dash software, and we can change things around. Wheel speed? Nah, we want water temperature. So now in the middle here, we've got the temperature of the vehicle. Boost pressure? Yeah, you know what? Bottom left. Two thousand years later. Now, because of the way in which Beam and G works, sometimes it doesn't like to spawn wheels anymore. So I'm going to hit Control R. We get our wheel back. That is just a side effect of probably, I don't know, the game being made a lot with Java, but you can see... <laughs> well, that was tricky. You can see that this thing now does what you want to do. It's creating boost pressure in the middle. And airspeed is just below that, though really this is not the greatest uh, setup for this. Probably should have gone the small original dash size. I just wanted to do my own uh, interesting thing. You get the idea. I showed you all of the tricky ways in which you can make this work. So then you can make up your own mind when it comes around to it. And you know all of this extra modding stuff. Now I would only consider this mod to be probably a... A 3 out of 10. It's quite simple. The hardest thing you have to do is just do a little bit of troubleshooting with finding uh, coordinates and moving those coordinates around. The rest of it, drag and drop, and then drag and drop a little bit of code, all that sort of stuff, rather simple. I could have made this even more simple by making it a additional modification slot thing, but a lot of people are already using the additional modification slot because of what I've been doing. Uh, and... I wanted to give you choice. I didn't want you to have like two things there and then have to work with that. So I've set that up. So then this is its own thing. Oh my God, this is so annoying. There we go, good, okay. Car is all good. Let's try taking this to Hill. Oh my God. 
So this will sometimes have chronic understeer and I'm not the happiest about that. It does do pretty well. You know what, actually, let's take the Bonneville Salt Flats quickly. It shouldn't go very fast, but it might. Automation be doing some weird things at the moment. All of these lovely missing textures. Bandily tastic. All right, let's just see how fast we go. All right, that first gear wheel spin when it gets into boost is so brutal. And here we go. So we have the, what, 18% aero, uh, sorry, engine damage thing. I haven't seen yet anything wrong with that. Let's see what happens when we get to full speed. We're now getting a lot more drag than what automation said we'd have, but it's not doing terribly. 280 kilometers now. I think I said that we were just... Oh, you know what? I didn't check the speed after I uh, put in all the invisible wings. So 287? How accurate is that? Oh, actually, you know what? That's very perfectly on. What was the top speed it recommended? 286. So even this is wrong. Thank you. Goodbye. Can we go any more than that, though? We did reach 287. It looked like we had a little bit more room to play with. Oh, 288. Look at that. We're one kilometer over. That means we're on borrowed time. You know what? I think we're done. 288, though, is really fast. For that one country in North America, that's 178 miles per hour. So, not slow, but also not hypercar quick. But a lot of hypercars these days don't need to reach that because they're relying more on aerodynamics for a better cornering experience. Since you're most of the time not going to be maxing out your speed on most courses. Really, the only one that you might do that on is maybe the Nürburgring Nordschleife sort of region, but still probably not. Unless we're talking like really high end LMPH or LMDH sort of thing, or LMP1, like the Evo, uh, the 919 Evo from Porsche. Not the Mitsubishi Evo, not the, don't get confused. But yeah, they're not road cars, they're not this. They're not originally an MX-5. So let's go take this now to do a little bit of, you know what, no. I've not done Friday Park Day in a while, and I think I'm feeling confident. We're going to use a uh, controller for this. We're going to go up Pike's Peak. I give up. Nah, I'm done. Nah. <laughs> There's a reason why I gave up on this. I might do it for more easier, but more powerful vehicles. Ones which I actually expect to do particularly well. But as it stands, my skill level is just not there yet. I don't think BeamNG is really quite there yet because I feel as if it's not quite the same as uh, how a lot of other better simulators would probably try to deal with this. <sighs> but for now, I hope you've all enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. If this is the sort of content you like, please. I am really slowing on my growth. My videos views are way down. Please check out my other stuff. There's a whole bunch of other things. I'm going to have some related videos that you may want to also check out in the description. All the links to the files and the line of code that you'll need is all down in the description as well. But for now, I hope you will enjoy and I'll catch you next time.